Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. I have an itch on the back of my head. What do you think of that? All right. <laughs> what a great way to start a video, huh? All right, let's get into it. Eric from Chelsea, Massachusetts. Hey, DG, how is it on the road for you so far? Eric, I love being on the road. I enjoy traveling. I like driving, as a matter of fact, but wow, man, I got to tell you, Every single place we eat is like a fast food restaurant because we're always moving. We can't sit down and have really good meals. I am packing on the weight, buddy. I think I've gained like 15 pounds over this last year because of my diet, which scares me to death. So I've got to start doing a better job of eating. But other than that, I love it a lot. Well, I have had this question stuck in my head for a while, and now that you are back on track with questions, I thought I would ask. Cool. Glad we're able to, to answer this for you. Based on recent studies, early mammals like the ones in, Jurassic, in the Jurassic and Cretaceous, maybe even in the Triassic, were considerably smarter than the majority of dinosaurs on Earth due to their brain-to-body size ratio. Woo! Nice. Why do you think mammals, despite appearing around when dinosaurs did, developed a higher intellect or cleverness in such a short amount of time, while for dinosaurs it took until the end of the late Cretaceous to gain that kind of intelligence? This, this is great, man. I love these sort of questions. Um, okay, mammals remain small. Well, let me go back. All animals need to figure out a way of finding and niche a, a opening in the environment where they can make their living. And so there's different ways to do that. Some grow big and therefore their size kind of makes their own opening. Some remain small, like the early mammals. They're, they remain smaller. And what I think needed to happen is those that survived each generation were the ones that were a little smarter than the big predators of their time. And the big predators of their time, most of them were dinosaurs. So as dinosaurs put all their uh, effort into weaponry and size, mammals put all of theirs into brain size and remaining small. So in other words, let's say there's three of us. We're three little furry mammals and we're in the Jurassic period. We have an uncle, not so smart, but kind of big. We have uh, you, Eric, who is the smartest of the bunch, and then we have me. I kind of sort of have the smarts, but I'm also a little more daring. Okay, our big uncle goes out and tries to take on a dinosaur because he thinks he can. He gets eaten. That's the end of uncle, whatever. You, on the other hand, figure out, I'll go out at night when that big thing isn't out there, and that would be safer. And myself, I think, you know what? Maybe Eric is right, but... Maybe I'll go out a little bit earlier than dark so I can see better. And I get picked off and I get eaten. Okay, right off the bat, old uncle so-and-so died quick, which is probably good for our species. I died second, but you didn't, which means you're going to be around to be able to have kids and pass on your smart genes so that the smart ones have a better chance. And then as your kids grow, the smartest of yours continues to survive because he figures out how, and the other ones get eaten and so on and so on. And so what ends up happening over time is when the smartest one in the family is the one that survives, then the smartest one in the family with the biggest brain is able to pass his or her genes on to the next generation. So what you have is you have uh, mammals becoming smarter and smarter and smarter, while dinosaurs didn't need those kind of intellectual concepts because their sheer size in some case and their weaponry allowed them to be able to fill a void that existed in the environment. So what I suspect is um, that the only reason why dinosaurs didn't come up with the same level of intellect is because they didn't need to in order to survive in their environment and mammals did. Uh, that's a great question though. All right, next one, Zach, the Steel City Tiger. Zach is a great friend of mine. He's from Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Um, Zach, it is so good to hear from you. I hope you and your family are doing great. I hope you guys have a great holiday. I appreciate the uh, emails you send back and forth with me as we kind of discuss things, Zach, and I really value our friendship, so it's great to hear from you. He said, first of all, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, hope you're doing well. Second of all, I want to wish you uh, either a happy early or belated birthday, Christmas and New Year. <laughs> the reason why I said that 
is because he knows that it takes me a while to answer these. So actually, Zach, my birthday is uh, next month in December. And so you beat my birthday, you beat Christmas, and you beat New Year's. So the same to you, my friend. Happy birthday, belated or early. Uh, Merry Christmas to you and your family. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Happy New Year's. Whee! Okay, that was my New Year's thing. <laughs> I don't know when you will answer my question. Well, now I knew, do. But today I only have one question that came to me when I was working. Do you believe that it was possible to get a hybrid dinosaur? Like today we breed lions and tigers, horses and donkeys, etc. I wanted to know if you thought that was possible. I believe it may have been in the subspecies like the Allosaurid, Tyrannosaurids, etc. But just wanted to get your two cents on it. Don't know if it's a dumb question or not, but had to ask. The family says hi, your friend, the guy who found a name, yes, <laughs> Zach, P.S., when are, we, when are you ever going to come up to the Berg? Would like to meet you. Well, Zach, I'd love to come up there and meet you. And again, tell your family I said hello. And most importantly, Zach, you've never asked a dumb question ever, so you never have to ask that. All right, could dinosaurs interbreed through species? I think absolutely they could. In fact, I'm of the opinion that, especially in the Ceratopsians, I think the reason why there's so many odd-looking Ceratopsians is because I do believe there was interbreeding going on, and I think that's what gives us such a myriad of unusual shapes and, and designs and horns and oddities. I don't think that every individual species that we know uh, sort of branched out on its own from one common ancestor. I don't believe, I, I can't imagine we can get that many oddities I think it's more likely that we have interspecies uh, uh, relationships going on, and what's happening are that the, there's new uh, dinosaurs being born that have features similar to their parents, but oddities. Uh, that, that's just my opinion. Is it possible that the same thing occurred with theropods? Yeah, I think that would be possible. I mean, would an Albertosaurus and a, um, uh, uh, oh my gosh, my mind just went blank. Who is it? Displetosaurus. Would they have bred? Is it possible that they could have bred and, and created sort of a hybrid? I don't know. I mean, I think it's certainly possible. And so, uh, yeah, if animals can do it today, there's no reason why dinosaurs weren't capable of doing it as well, I, I suspect. But that's a great question. Anyway, good to hear from you, buddy. All right. Alexander from Stockholm, Sweden. Hey, DG, how's it going? I'm fine if you ask. Well, that's cool because I was going to say, I hope you're doing as uh, well as well, Alexander. I read about the raptor's lifestyle and all, and all that and compared it with modern pack animals like lions, for example. And I wondered, what if I understood lions correctly, when a lion gets ser seriously injured, sometimes the pack pushes the wounded lion away from the pack for the sake of the pack's survival. Do you think raptors did that and maybe if one of them broke a leg or maybe got a serious wound, they would uh, keep them there to help him heal or simply leave it alone to die? Hope you understand my question and that it wasn't uh, too much for you to, to answer. Keep up your good work and have a nice day. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you very much. I understand your, your question completely. Your question is, if somebody in the family gets hurt, does everybody turn their back and say good luck? Well, the evidence for theropods, which includes the raptors, the dromaeosaurs, theropods, it appears, did tend to those members of the family who are injured. Look at Sue and look at Stan, two big tyrannosaurs that clearly had some devastating injuries and yet all of those injuries healed. And it suggests in order for those injuries to heal, they would have had to have been, uh, somebody would have had to have been feeding them during a recovery time. I believe that predatory dinosaurs, because there weren't as many as herbivores, needed to be able to maintain the, uh, the well-being of the group. And I think they would have tended to the sick and the injured. I think it was in their best interest to attempt to be able to rehabilitate these animals so that there was that many more members of the hunting party available. In other words, I don't think they would turn. Now, let's say that they're attacking something and one of them uh, is, has got a mortal injury and he's laying there. No, I don't think they drug, drug, drug him back to the, to the hideout where they would try to tend him. I don't think they would do that. I do think they would say, hey, sorry. In fact, they might even eat the guy. 
But if it's an injury that could that still allows it to move, then I do think that they probably would have actively tried to take care of it. Now, all of this is absolute pure speculation because there's no evidence to support it. But that's why it's important that we look at modern animals as sort of a window into the past. Look at how animals behave. Um, there's, there's not a great deal of animals that absolutely care for, but like in the case of lions, look, if you're injured, um, I think they do try to take care of you for a while, but if it, if it seems to be something that you're not gonna overcome, then they kick you out and that's the end of that. I think raptors probably would have done the same thing, I guess, I don't know. I don't know what it would be like to be a raptor, but man, wouldn't you love to have a time machine and go back and watch how these animals behave? We might be completely, totally wrong and 90% of the things we think we know. All right, that's it for now. If you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. Um, fill out the form and send it to me. Thank you guys so much. Young people out there, practice that reading. Everybody out there, take care of the people around you because it makes the world a whole lot better place. I'll see you soon. Take care.